Hi everyone, welcome to another video of Medical Awesome and in this video I'll be talking about the colonoscopy guidelines and um, at what intervals colonoscopy is indicated. And it's going to be a lot of numbers but hopefully it's a lot of fun and it's a quick revision. So in the general population for colon cancer screening, the general recommendation is that you start screening at about 50 years of age. It's now recently reduced to 45 years of age by USPSDF and you repeat it every 10 years. Now if you have one first degree relative who has the diagnosis of colorectal cancer, at the age less than 60 years of age, then you start at the age of 40 or the age of which they were diagnosed minus 10 years, whichever is earlier. So say the relative was diagnosed at the age of 45, so 45 minus 10 is 35, you start screening them at 35 years of age. If they were diagnosed at the age of 55, so 55 minus 45 is 45, but 40 is lesser, so you start screening them at 40 years of age. And then you repeat the colonoscopy every five years. If you have two first degree relatives that were diagnosed with colorectal cancer, at any age, you start screening at the age of 40, regardless of what their age was diagnosis was, and you repeat the colonoscopy every five years. Now, first degree relative is a parent, a sibling, or a child. Let's move on to high risk cancer um, disease states. So the first one is FAP or familial adenomatous polyposis and you start screening or start colonoscopy or flexible sigmoidoscopy at the age of 10 to 12 years. You start at a very young age and then you repeat it every one to two years until the patient undergoes colectomy, then you don't need to do um, the screening anymore. For HNPCC or Lynch syndrome, you start at 20 to 25 years of age or at the age at which the youngest cancer was diagnosed in the family and minus 10 years, and then you repeat it every one to two years. For inflammatory bowel disease such as ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease, you um, start screening eight years after the diagnosis of colitis. So if a patient has ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease for eight years, that's when you start and you repeat it one to two years thereafter. So that's pretty straightforward. FAP, HNPCC, and IBD all have repeat intervals of one to two years, so that's easy to remember. FAP is um, starts at a young age, 10 to 12 years. HNPCC, bigger words, so it starts at a later, later age, 20 to 25 years. And then IBD, um, the number is eight years, and the way I remember it is like the B for bowel looks like an eight. So... Um, that's how I remember it. And then um, for patients who have a personal history of colorectal cancer and say they were cured, the next colonoscopy will be one year after the diagnosis. And then if it's normal, then you do it after three years after the diagnosis, uh, three years after the last colonoscopy. And if that's normal, you do it five years after that and then repeat it every five years till the benefits of the colonoscopy outweigh the risk. Now we come to the management of adenomatous polyps and serrated polyps. And this is tough, but you gotta stick with me and you gotta memorize it, um, even if it's for a day just before your boards. So let's get started. So if you have a small hyperplastic polyp, then your next colonoscopy should be um, the same as uh, average risk individual. Now, if you have one to two tubular adenomas, then your next colonoscopy is between five to 10 years. If you have three to 10 adenomas, or if you have one adenoma that is greater than one centimeter, or you have a villus adenoma or features suggestive of a high grade dysplasia, then your a next colonoscopy is at three years. 
if you have greater than 10 adenomas then you need to get a colonoscopy less than three years I mean, it's usually one year and if you have a piecemeal polypectomy which means like an entire piece was removed it's usually a sessile polyp which is greater than two centimeters you have to verify that you adequately remove the polyp or not by getting a colonoscopy in two to six months so basically all you have to remember is that if you have three to ten if you have greater than one centimeter if you have an villous adenoma or anything looking villainous then you get it in three years and then greater than 10 is less than three years and then um, one to two tubular adenomas is five to ten years and that sh should make things easier if you remember the three years indications and then um, you automatically remember the less than three year indication and then the five to ten year indication it's kind of simple Kinda. And now we move on to the management of serrated polyps. So if you have hyperplastic polyps that are less than one centimeter and less than 20 in number, your next colonoscopy is same as an average risk individual. Now if you have serrated polyps that are less than one centimeter and if you just have one to two of them, your next colonoscopy is between 5 to 10 years. If you have 3 to 4, then it's 3 to 5 years. And if you have 5 to 10, then it's within 3 years. So that's like the number of polyps and then the colonoscopy frequency. So if you have lesser polyps, you um, can screen at a larger interval. But if you have more polyps, then you have to screen at a lesser interval. Now, if you have a hyperplastic polyp, which is greater than one centimeter or a serrated polyp which is greater than one centimeter or a serrated polyp with dysplasia or if you have a serrated adenoma you need to screen if uh, your next colonoscopy is going to be in three years and then again if you have greater than 10 adenomas your next colonoscopy is in a year and if you have a sessile adenoma which was removed piecemeal which means the entire thing was removed um, it's usually greater than two centimeters. You need to verify the removal two to six months uh, after the polypectomy. So for the management of serrated polyps, um, sorry for that. Um, so for the management of serrated polyps, um, the piecemeal one is easy to remember because it's greater than two centimeters and in two to six months, you verify the removal and it's the same for the adenomatous polyps and the serrated polyps. Now for um, the greater than 10 adenomas removed, for serrated polyps is a definite one year, for the adenomatous polyps is less than three years. So you can just remember like one year um, and then you should be fine. Um, for the um, serrated polyps, for the three-year indication, you need to kind of remember the villainous kind of um, description. So if it's like greater than one centimeter, if it's dysplastic, if it's um, a serrated, a serrated adenoma, it's like three centimeter, three years. And then that was similar for the adenomatous polyps too where you know it was willis looking or high grade dysplasia or it was greater than one centimeter then we did three years now for um the only thing that changed for the three year in the numbers was for the serrated polyps it was a five to ten polyps would qualify you for a three year um for the adenomatous polyps it's just three to ten adenomas would qualify you for a three year interval um and then for one to two, um, it's a five to 10 year interval for both of them. And then for the three to four, um, the difference is that in a serrated polyp, you can um, follow up them in three to five years. And that is all. I know it's a lot. Um, I'm actually giving my boards pretty soon. Um, so I'm just gonna um, try to memorize all this and um, hopefully um, get the questions right. And I hope you're able to do the same. Uh, stay awesome. And I will see you in the next video.